in the headlines. Relatives of victims of Kaduna Abuja train attack call for help as bandits release photos of victims. Seven abducted herdsmen regain freedom in Anambra. Adamawa Assembly declare lawmakers' seats vacant over defection. And on the foreign scene, Russia halts gas supply to Poland and Bulgaria. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. <music> Now the news in detail. Family members of victims of Abuja Kaduna train attack have continued to cry out for help as abductors yet again release photos of the remaining victims. In the photographs released on a Tuesday, 62 victims were seen in four groups, including children, aged women, and men. Chairman of the group of concerned relatives of abducted persons, Dr. Abdul Fatai Jima, who confirmed the photographs, said all those displayed in the picture are the kidnapped victims. He appealed to the government and other relative authorities to show leadership and courage by ensuring that the victims are rescued unhurt. An 83-year-old woman who is said to be suffering from diabetes was also among the victims with her daughter. This is the third time the terrorists would release evidence that their captives are alive. Anambra Police Command says seven out of eight herdsmen allegedly kidnapped in the state on Saturday have been found and rescued. Police spokesman of the command, Tochuku Ikenga, who disclosed this to newsmen, said the Joint Police and Military Patrol team found the herdsmen sitting in the bush unhurt on Sunday. They were found at Ogbene Ochuche Omodu in Ogbaru local government area of the state. Meanwhile, Chairman of Miete Alla Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria Southeast, Hidado Siddiqui, had alleged on Saturday that 10 herdsmen were kidnapped and 300 cows rustled in Ogbaru in Anambra. Siddiqui said the kidnappers demanded ransom of 4 million naira for the release of the abductees. Uh, uh, those persons scattered all over the bush, even with the cows. So when they now saw that we are, uh, it's actually uh, uh, security uh, personnel. So they came out and as I speak with you right now, the operation is still ongoing and uh, the bush where they were found, our men are heavily de deployed, even with the uh, military. Some group of people around 1.30 went to the cattle settlement at a community called Obene. They shoot open fire shooting uh, when they are shooting our men are sleeping so when they just start shooting they, are, they, they wake up and start running so unfortunately one of them by name Shuaibu Magaji was abducted the first victim that was kidnapped on that 22nd was nowhere to be found we have not seen him dead or alive Gombe State Government has raised an alarm over security threats in Wawazenge Kerezin Reserve, located in Duku local government area of the state. The state governor, Yahaya Inouas, raised the alarm when he hosted officials of the Institute for Security Studies at the government house. Ibrahim Ismail reports. Officials of the Institute for Security Studies in company of participants of Executive Intelligence Management, EIM Course 15, were in Gombe for research purpose. Governor Inuahaya used the opportunity to speak on security situation of Gombe State and called for strengthened effort to maintain its peaceful status in the northeast region. As far as our uh, uh, issue of our land is concerned, I've mentioned in my own speech that uh, there doesn't seem to be proper implementation and coordination, and the state cannot go it alone. We cannot prevent people from coming in, especially. SDC, uh, SDS can be a witness that the movements of those that have been pressed hard now in the Northwest is becoming not settled. And if care is not taken, it may turn to another sentence. And because it's so big, so vast. The Institute for Security Studies team said the research theme for the Executive Intelligence Management Course 15 is a global climate challenge, prospect and priorities for economic development and conflict resolution in Africa. So in that way, we are also here to tap on your repertoire of knowledge 
and encourage you to interact with us freely on this theme with a view to enriching our research findings. Therefore, permit me, ladies and gentlemen, the honor and kindly join me too in inviting His Excellency to deliver a paper and interact with the team. Speaking earlier, the Director of State Security Services, Gombe State Command, appreciate the state government's effort in strengthening security. Through your effort and your desire to have a peaceful state, Gombe is number one as far as security is concerned in the Northeast of India. Wawazangi Grazing Reserve is a 144,000 hectares of land located in Gombe North, bordering Bauchi State. Security intelligence has raised fears of possible invasion of the forest by terrorists. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Gunmen suspected to be political thugs in the early hours of Wednesday stormed the residence of a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress in Bielsa State. Honorable Sunday Frank Oputu and shot him dead. Daily Trust gathered that Frank Oputu, who had also served as state chairman of the Conference of Nigerian Political Parties, was assassinated at his residence at Bay Bridge Road, Yenagua, the state capital. Frank Oputu, an ally of the former Minister of Agriculture, Senator Heineken Lokbobiri, and belonged to APC faction in the state loyal to him, was shot through his window while asleep by yet-to-be-identified gunmen. Police authorities in Bielsa State, who confirmed the gruesome murder of the APC chieftain through a statement by the police spokesman, S.P. Asenim Butswat, said the commissioner of police has directed operatives to intensify efforts to identify and arrest the perpetrators. A frontline presidential aspirant of the ruling All Progressives Congress and the Minister of Transportation, Chibui K. Rotimi Amechi, has again assured that he will run an all-inclusive government that will bring about national cohesion if given the opportunity to lead the country. Amechi gave the assurance in Emo State as part of consultations with party stakeholders in a bid to fly the party's flag in the 2023 presidential election. You will ask questions you support us. How do I do? Just look at me and describe. Who can describe how I do? So what I need, what I need to for? How come a young man? Everybody, you a guy. Exactly. You can approach me. There is no, there is no stars I need. Exactly. You can come to me, and I can talk to you. I can get angry with you. You can come to. So I can see the bridge between the old and the what? So finally, I may be the youngest, I may go up the youngest. But I'm the most experienced. Oh, Once you're facing here, now I face it in Potato. You remember? Yes. As governor of River State, what you are currently facing here, I face in Potato. And I dealt with it. I dealt with it and I overcame it. Be less assured that if we are given this power, we will ensure that we will overcome this crisis. We'll come again. By the grace of God, maybe as an aspirant or as a candidate. As a candidate. Hey. As a candidate. But one strong message I want to give is that there is a new spirit in the Southeast for a great party. You must have also heard that our second governor has also expressed influence to the president. But this is a contest between a brother and a brother. So when we enter the bedroom, we will resolve it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Some protesters on Tuesday stormed the Adamawa State House of Assembly, barricading the entrance in a bid to stop the alleged plans by the Speaker of the House, Aminu Iyabas, to declare vacant the seat of the People's Democratic Party lawmaker representing Michika State constituency in the Assembly, Ayuba Joseph, for defecting to the All Progressives Congress. But the defection of Ayuba announced on the 19th of April has tilted that slim majority enjoyed by the PDP in favor of the APC in the state legislature. The development, which is brewing tensions in Adamawa state, has not gone down well with the PDP and her lawmakers, who had planned to use the day's sit-in to declare the defecting lawyer's seat vacant. The report. These protesters here have come to register their displeasure about an alleged plot to suspend Honorable Ayuba Joseph, a former People's Democratic Party lawmaker representing Michika State constituency who dumped the party for the All Progressive Congress in Atamawa State. The demonstrators temporarily barricaded the assembly and nearly disrupted the day's sitting before reinforcement of anti-riot policemen restored order. Honorable Ayuba, the center of the crisis, speaks. I had a rumor that they want to declare my seat uh, back on today. But I'm waiting for it to happen because I was not the first person to detect. Most of them were already heard from APC to PDP. That was Donna Bastin. He tried to left APC, AGC, to APC. Nothing has been about that. But I don't know the reason that my defection is different from others. Speaking further on his defection, the lawmaker popularly known as the police said he quit the PDP because he no longer felt accommodated in the party. Recently, he gave money to PDP members for just home. I was excluded. He gave to 13 members. He refused to give me, which shows that I'm no longer important. Before that, that's why I feel to quit and join the APC. Because if I want to build a home and stay on some, if you build a home, you need to stay under the shade. So, a uh, shade was not given to me. So I cannot continue staying under the sun. I must look for shade. Meanwhile, the Adamawa State House of Assembly has declared the seat of the member representing Michika State constituency, Joseph Ayuba Vacant, for defecting from the ruling of People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. During Wednesday's plenary, presided by the Speaker of the House, Aminu Ia Abbas, the House citing Section 109, subsection 1D of the Constitution, declared the seat of the lawmaker vacant by virtue of leaving his party under whose crest he was elected. Presenting the issue before plenary, attended by 13 out of the 25 members, the De Deputy Speaker, Pamawakeno Makondo, citing Section 109 of the Constitution, urged the House to declare the seat of the lawmaker vacant. After the motion was moved and seconded, the Speaker declared the seat of the lawmaker vacant and asked the clerk to inform relevant authorities, including INEC, of the House's re uh, decision. Last Saturday, the 23rd of uh, this month, he has declared publicly leave PDP to APC. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, he has violated Section 109, Sub 1, Sub G, and Sub 2 has given you that power, Mr. Speaker. Plan 
Still talking politics, the former governor of Ogun State, Senator Ibikunle Amosun, says he will declare his intention to contest the 2023 presidential election on the platform of the All Progressives Congress on Thursday, May 5, 2022. Amosun, who currently represents Ogun Central in the Senate, disclosed this in a notification letter addressed to the Senate President Ahmed Lawang and read during Wednesday's plenary. The lawmaker said he had the requisite insights, experiences and network of relationships to lead the country. Letter from the Sungui Senator Ibukule Amosun, CON, FCA. Our dear Senate President, notification and invitation to the formal declaration to contest for the Office of President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under the All Progressive Congress APC. I bring the greatest respect that I write to notify you and my distinguished colleagues of my intention to contest for the Office of President of our dear country, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and to respectfully invite you and my distinguished colleagues to the formal declaration ceremony. A People's Democratic Party presidential aspirant, Peter Obi, has said he is not desperate to be president, but eager to see Nigeria work when he takes the mantle of leadership in the country. Obi, a two-term governor of Anambra State and vice presidential candidate of the PDP in 2019, stated this on Wednesday when he visited Bayelsa State Governor Senator Due Diri in Yenagua. Governor Diri's spokesman, Daniel Alabra, quoted Obi in a statement as saying that Nigeria was a great country with untapped potentials, which he is ready to harness in order to move the nation away from a consumption economy to a productive one. The presidential hopeful, who reeled out the statistics of agricultural value chain in Nigeria's economy as against oil revenue, decried the level of neglect of food production in the country. He asserted that if elected Nigeria's president, he would end the current oil revenue sharing formula and introduce a production formula, particularly in agriculture and ICT. In his remarks, the Bayelsa governor, Senator Duye Diri, said OB proved his worth while he served as governor of Anambra, especially when he saved and handed over 75 billion naira to his successor. He said Nigeria needed well-equipped and knowledgeable people like Obi to rescue the country from those who have failed to fix it. Chairman and Chief Executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa, retired, has urged political parties to make drug integrity tests part of the screening requirements for aspirants seeking to contest political offices in the 2023 elections on their platforms. Marwa stated this while responding to questions from journalists at the 2022 first quarter Best Performing Commands Awards ceremony at the agency's national headquarters in Abuja on Wednesday, 27, 2022. A statement from the director, media and advocacy of the agency, Femi Baba Femi, noted that such drug integrity test will certify that whoever is given the responsibility to serve the nation is in a stable condition to handle the affairs they have been entrusted with. He regretted a situation where leaders spent funds meant for public good on consumption of illicit substances, adding that he has notified the national chairman of the APC on the need to conduct drug tests on both elected and appointed officials. While pledging forward same notification to the PDP, Marwa maintained that the agency will continue in his advocacy until parties and other state governments take a cue from Kano State. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Preparations in full gear ahead of Sela celebration. Do stick with us. This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. You're still watching Trust News Update. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. 
We told you that relatives of victims of Kaduna Abuja train attack call for help as bandits release photos of victims. You also heard that seven abducted herdsmen regained freedom in Anambra. To more news, President Muhammad Buhari on Wednesday presided over the Federal Executive Council at the State House, where he also swore in four permanent secretaries. The new permanent secretaries include Beatrice Jedi Agba, Kachalom Daju, Shehu Ibrahim, and Mary Ogwe. Present at the oath taken were the President, Vice President, Professor Emi Oshibajo, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, and the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Dr. Falasha Deyemiasan, as well as some ministers. Shortly after the meeting commenced, the Cabinet observed a minute of silence for former Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, Aviation, Tonye Graham Douglas, who died recently at the age of 82. <laughs> As Muslims prepare to mark yet another Eid al-Fatir celebration, residents in Keno are lamenting the high cost of food items and other essential commodities. Trust TV's Idris Jibrin reports that despite the current economic challenges, businesses in Keno are still booming with people from different parts of the country trooping in for seller shopping. The report. Ramadan fast has come to an end and seller's celebration is here again. Abdul Razak Ahmad and many other Muslims in Kanu have been looking forward to this moment. But this year, the cost of livelihood has been high, and more bad news may await, as market price of various products is crashing. I bought textile materials three weeks ago, and I'm here now to buy again. Honestly, the price is too high compared to how I bought them last year. We are in the market to buy clothes in one hand, and on the other hand, we are dealing with the high cost of food items, which is why even if you get the money, it will not have value. Although businesses are booming across many parts of Kano, but rising price of food items and other essential commodities needed for the festivities remains a threat to many residents. We can only ask God to help us because items that were sold at 1,000 naira have increased to 3,000 naira. Shoes that we once bought for our children at 600 naira now go for 2,000 naira. Lace of 3,000 is now 10,000 naira. So the whole thing is just unbearable. Often refers to as the rendezvous of business and businessmen, Kanu has for centuries remained the Nigeria's center of commerce and a trade hub for many West African countries where millions of people troops in to trade, especially by this time of the year. Well, people are coming out to buy. But I must tell you that the price is not favorable for both the sellers and the buyers. We are just hoping that government workers will get paid so that they can come out. Despite this, the famous Doano Greens Market, the largest Abubakar Remy market in Sabongari, the popular contemporary textile market among others, alters the story of how Kano people are preparing for this year's Eid al-Fitr celebrations. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano.
In business, Debt Management Office says it has received 300 successful bids in the recently released Federal Government of Nigeria bonds offer. The DMO disclosed this in a statement on Wednesday, adding that the bonds offer were oversubscribed to the tune of 34.15 billion naira, 12.3 billion naira, and 143 billion naira, respectively. The bonds were offered at 1,000 naira per unit, with a minimum subscription of 50 million naira, and in multiples of 1,000 units thereafter. Away from Nigeria, Russian energy's giant Gazprom says it has cut gas supplies to Poland and Bulgaria over the refusal to pay in rubles. In a statement on Wednesday, the Russian energy giant said it has completely suspended gas supplies to Poland's PGNIG and Bulgaria's Bulgagas due to non-payments in rubles. Both Ukraine and the EU say Russia is using energy to try and blackmail countries supporting Ukraine. Bulgaria accuses gas from a breach in its contract, while Poland says it can manage the situation. The EU is holding emergency gas talks to decide how to respond, but says it has contingency plans in place. The cutoffs are the first since Russian President Vladimir Putin's announcement last month that unfriendly foreign buyers would have to transact with Gazprom in rubles instead of United States dollars and euros. The demand was a response to international sanctions over its war in Ukraine. And finally, in sports, goals from Kevin De Bruyne, Gabriel Jesus, Phil Foden and Bernardo Silva gave Manchester City lead in the first leg of UEFA Champions League semi-final played at Etihad Stadium in a seven-goal thriller. Karim Benzema and Vinicius Jr. scored three goals to reduce the tally to 4-3. Carlo Ancelotti will hope for a better performance in the second leg at Santiago Bernabeu. With that, we've come to the end of a news update on Trust TV. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.